guys, Shane Starnes here with DroidMotorX.com and today I'm going to show you guys the ROM that I've been running for the past couple of weeks. This is the Eclipse ROM for the Samsung Galaxy S3 on Verizon. Um, as you guys can tell, it is super fast. It comes with the Nova Launcher, uh, but obviously you can download other launchers. This is an AOSP ROM, so this is not based on TouchWiz. Uh, that being said, it doesn't include any of the TouchWiz features. It's totally de-bloated. So if you're an AOSP type of person, this is definitely for you. If you're a CM10 fan or an AOKP fan, then this is the ROM that you have probably been looking for. Um, like I said, all the TouchWiz elements have been stripped. So let's go ahead and jump into settings and see what we're working with here. If we go to About Phone, you'll see that the version of Android is 4.1.2. That is the latest official version of Android. Uh, we know that 4.2 is coming, but it's not here yet, so this is the latest build. If you look at the baseband there, it is on the very latest baseband uh, for Verizon, the uh, LHE. And then you'll see that we're running a custom kernel, and uh, we'll get to that later. It is overclockable, and you'll see the build number down there is Eclipse D2 Verizon. Uh, this would be version 2.1. Uh, we'll jump into settings, and I want to show you guys the performance settings real quick. Uh, like I said, this does include a custom kernel, and if you go to processor, you can actually overclock the CPU. So go to maximum CPU frequency, you can overclock it to 1620 megahertz or 1.62 gigahertz. You know that it comes stock at 1.5 gigahertz, so it's not much, but it is stable and it doesn't drain you know, tons of battery if you were to super overclock it. But you can definitely notice the speed increases when you do overclock it. Of course, you could go stock 1.5 if you wanted there as well. Uh, there are some governors here. I always just keep it at whatever the developer has it set at. I feel like they know what is best on their ROM uh, with their kernel, so I, I feel like Normally, if you just keep it stock, you're probably better off. If you wanted to do a power save, you could, and that would save some battery life and performance. Uh, would speed up the process because it would put you at max CPU all the time, but it also would drain your battery. So there's kind of a little give and take there. If you wanted general settings, you have your theme chooser. Now, uh, you can install any theme for the theme chooser from the Play Store that's compatible with CM10 or AOKP. If it's compatible with those ROMs, it will also be compatible with this ROM, and all you'd have to do is just click Apply to apply that theme. It'll uh, apply everything on the fly there. And then if you go to About Eclipse ROM, this is just going to tell you about Nitroglycerin33. He is the developer, and of course, if you wanted to donate to him to tell him thanks, he, he also develops for several other devices, and I'm pretty sure just about every cent that he gets from his PayPal donations goes towards further development on other devices, as well as keeping up his website where he hosts all his ROMs. So you definitely want to give him a shout, on, a shout out on Twitter and hit that PayPal donation button. If we go back to settings, we can go to interface, and there's lots and lots of customization options here. If you go to general UI, uh, you can change your custom carrier label. So if you drop down your menu, it'll be there. Mine is always Droid Modder X. Status bar, this is where you can customize your battery style. I always just go with percentage, and you can see it there. Or you can just use battery text and remove the battery altogether. You can change your battery bar color. So if you had the My UI uh, battery bar enabled, you could do that. Or you could change your battery text color. So if we go to battery text colors and allow custom colors, you can actually change those colors there. You can change your sig signal status style. And you can have your brightness control. If you do that, it allows you to hold here and do your brightness like such. It's pretty pretty neat little feature there and you can also show notification count uh, so like when you have emails that pop up it'll show you a little a little number there beside the email notification so you see how many emails that you do have if we go into clock we can change the clock style and move that into the center and you can change the a.m. p.m. style and also the day of the week you can um, have that there as well power widgets that would be your drop down widgets here you can customize those here you can choose the buttons that you want, including your media buttons for play, skip, uh, play, skip, previous, play, pause, and then there's several other toggles here to choose from. Just about any toggle that you can think of. You can change the order here as well, so you would just grab it and change it wherever you wanted it to be. 
there is a power menu so that would be if you press and hold the power button you do have your reboot options there as well as some toggles on the power menu navigation bar um, personally I normally do not enable this on the Galaxy S3 because we already have our buttons here are capacitive buttons so for me there's no need to take up extra screen real estate with the navigation bar but if you wanted to you could enable that and they would show up those would be your soft keys that are built into the OS they would show up and then you can also choose here to uh, customize that any way you want you can change the height and the width of that bar you can change the color of the navigation bar lots of customization there and then your hardware keys, you can actually enable custom actions and you can choose what these buttons do. You can actually uh, change what they do. If we go to font size, we can actually change the font size there as well. And I normally just keep it at normal. Input controls, uh, you can change what your volume rocker does. It can either wake up the phone or you can have it to uh, serve as music controls there as well. And in the launcher, this is the Nova launcher settings. Uh, there's lots of things that you can do here. Uh, you can change the number of icons in the dock. So I have seven icons there in the dock. You can have that to five or as, as few or as many as you want, up to seven. Uh, then for the desktop, you can change the scroll effect. So I just have it at cube. You can have none or card stack. So if we change that to card stack and we go back. You can see what that looks like. Just kind of do it slowly so you can see what's going on there. And then I'll change it back to cube. And you can see what that looks like. So we'll go back into settings. There's several other things that you can do on the launcher. Uh, you can actually change the grid. So if you wanted more apps, you can do that. So if you go to desktop grid, you can actually change that up to seven by seven. Uh, so if you wanted more icons on your home screen, you definitely have options for that. You can change the width and height of those margins. Uh, you can have the persistent search bar. You can either choose to have that or not have that. So if I say never, then that would go away. And most of you guys are pretty familiar with Nova Launcher, so I'm not going to go into too much more detail with the Nova Launcher. It is just a very fast launcher, as you can tell. And I think that's just about it for, uh, you do have some lock screen settings, and uh, you can change the screen security, so you can actually add a pin pad. Um, you can add face unlock, you can change the background, you can have weather to display on your lock screen. So if we choose to display weather... I think most of these, well, there you go. I was going to say that you probably had to have a reboot, but it looks like you don't. Just took a second to show up. And then you can also change the slider shortcut. So if I went here, I could actually choose a custom application, like the browser. Click Save to save it, and then we will turn the screen off and back on. And now I have the browser that I can jump straight to. And then we have uh, some wallpapers here as well. And nitroglycerin has made some special Eclipse wallpapers. Okay guys, so that is the Eclipse ROM for the Samsung Galaxy S3 on Verizon. I'm gonna show you guys real quick how to install this ROM. Obviously you need to be rooted and you need to have an unlocked bootloader. You'll need to have a custom recovery installed. Once you have all that taken care of, you'll just reboot into recovery. And if you're not already running a custom ROM, another way to boot into recovery would be to hold the volume down, the home button, and the power all at once, and you'll power into the recovery mode. So once recovery comes up, it's a real simple install here. In fact, if you're used to installing ROMs, then you probably already know what to do. We're just going to wipe data, wipe cache, wipe Dalvik cache, and then install the ROM, and then install the GApps. So we'll just go to wipe, factory reset, swipe to wipe. Cache, swipe to wipe, Davit cache, swipe to wipe. Then we'll go to install, and we're looking for the Eclipse 2.1, build 3, swipe to flash. 
and you're just looking for the Jelly Bean G apps. Now I have one here from October 21st, and I believe that that is still the newest version. So we'll go ahead and select that and swipe to flash. When that's all finished, we will reboot the phone. And I'll leave you guys with the boot animation. It's just the standard Nexus Jelly Bean boot animation. Well, guys, you can find more of me at droidmoderx.com where I'll have the latest in Android and tech news. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at droidmoderx. We do random giveaways at, on the Twitter, uh, so you want to be sure that you are following the Twitter account, droidmoderx. Also, if you like this video and you'd like to see more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And give this video a big thumbs up if it helped you in any way. I certainly do appreciate it. Thanks, guys, for watching. I'll see you in the next one.